Hello, I'm Mark Schildhaus, and because things on the internet um, lose their date reference, today is Sunday, January 30th, 2022. This is version two of a video associated with the Hogwarts Express O gauge uh, layout uh, that I made for my wife. My wife and I are both Hogwarts uh, Harry Potter fans. Uh, I bought her a Hogwarts Express um, O gauge Lionel train, and uh, this is it. When I put this out originally uh, and showed some people, I made the statement that it's up and running in less than five minutes. A few people told me that's impossible. A few people told me prove it. I'm a naval aviator. Uh, the extremely hard takes me a couple seconds. The impossible takes me a couple seconds longer. So what I'm going to do is I am going to show you that I can move, the, take, move this board, put it up and running in less than five minutes. Uh, it really does roll. It is heavy. Uh, it's heavy because it's got a lot of train stuff in it, and it's got a lot of drawers. So it does roll, and it does go up, and had to pause to get my equipment, my timer. So um, it's off and running, and we're into it with two seconds. What we do is we pick up the wings, and underneath the wings are the legs, and the legs sometimes stick up with their magnets, sometimes they fall down by themselves and we put them out and we lock them in place and if you're close you can hear a click pick up the other wing very similar concept and the wings uh, rest on horizontal supports so that during storage and transit uh, they aren't uh, full force on the piano hinge that they pivot on lock them in that's all it takes as of now, uh, the layout is complete. You don't have to do any more. Open up the control drawer, take out the plug, and plug it in. So, I've got green lights on the control on the uh, panel. I'm going to set up my wife's Hogwarts Express. And Lionel is consistent. It has a draw bar. So I need to get that aligned and connected. Sometimes easier said than done. And make sure the wheels are on. I'm going to move it on down the track, so to speak. Okay. Uh, since I'm not pressed for time, I'm going to load all the cars. I'm not going to use a railer. See if I can screw this up. And that one's connected. Not worried about time. I said under five minutes. Every time I've timed this, it's been under three. So this time here, I'll probably be wrong. Okay. We have it. Uh, two minutes, six seconds. Now, As of right now, uh, 2 minutes and 34 seconds, so I beat the 5 minutes uh, without a problem. I'm going to run it around and operate the switches. set it it's been running around uh, all the switches are remote control everything's hardwired there's no additional wiring to put in and uh, at this point we have uh, three minutes and 28 seconds since I started the kitchen timer it's up and running it operates really well at this point I'm going to pause the video because I'm going to change it to a very special engine this guy here is a Lionel F7 EMD uh, F7 
electromotive division. And in the uh, late 1950s to the mid 1960s, living in Mount Greenwood, Chicago, Illinois, I uh, used to take a long pedal bike out to LaGrange, Illinois, and watch the new uh, EMD electromotive division engines uh, come out of their assembly plant there, and it was a lot of fun. And that's one of the reasons why this GP7 low nose uh, is is uh, very dear to me. We used to watch these come out or engines very similar to it. It was a lot of fun. This guy was given to me as a uh, used train for Christmas, probably 1960 time frame. Uh, I had the old tubular track and uh, some details on this um, as uh, still photos and I'll put uh, the audio with them as I put it into production. Let's continue. When the wings come down they rest on this horizontal support to keep the weight off the piano hinge that they pivot on at the top. Uh, I'm, I'm concerned about uh, preventing damage um, during transit during storage. Uh, this is a close-up of the board folded, a little bit dusty. It stores, unfortunately, about six feet from uh, our kitchen range uh, in my den. But this gives you an idea of how the um, joints, how the fast track had to be cut away or, uh, or adjusted to get them to fold. And uh, this includes some uh, photos of how close uh, these mesh and if you notice, um, I've got extra screws in both sides to maintain alignment. It goes together really, really well. Uh, I was pretty happy with it. This is my control panel. Um, the switches are all hard mounted uh, in relation to ship to where they are on the board. Um, they're all set up so that they properly throw along the ways. One of the things that uh, I'm going to close him up and uh, let me shut the transformer down. Um, this is how I store my cars. Um, I have slots on them in there so that they don't uh, roll forward and back very much. Uh, they do roll left to right pretty easily. And what I can do is I can put uh, strips of styrofoam in there to keep them from bashing against the drawers, but we generally don't move it a whole lot. One of the questions that came up is what about the, the uh, switch lamp covers and uh, to show you in better detail what I have there what I did was I took uh, thread and I'll probably paint this thread gray in the future to uh, cover them up and uh, put a noose around the top of the lamp uh, ran it around the uh, extension of the switch uh, turnout control and um, and then glued it all in in place so that if the lamp cover does come off it just stays right there doesn't go anywhere and it can be easily uh, put back on as long as you find the right find the right section to put it back on and as I said you need to find the right section so they are obviously directionally sensitive there we go um, th so when the when the wings go down if the lamps uh, come off they don't get lost they don't fall in the rug they don't disappear everything on the board is hardwired from underneath and I'll show you a photo of that this is the cable coming out of one side of the control board uh, drawer I've got cables going both sides and cables coming off the end as well uh, so that the um, network underneath is almost a continuous loop. Almost. Um, I have a break in it at the far end so it doesn't feed back into itself. And as you uh, come over to the other side of the board, uh, they're all anchored into the board with um, with cup hooks, eye hooks, whatever you want to call them. 
uh, so they don't hang down. They they stay pretty pretty well um, set, and this includes uh, track power and switch controls as well. As I said, I absolutely love terrain. This guy in particular is a uh, Tyco Atlas GP7. Um, it was uh, purchased for me for a Christmas present, probably 1960, uh, in a building that was between uh, Michigan Avenue and Cottage Grove on 111th Street in Chicago, Illinois, also known as the Pullman Car Works. So kind of cool. Uh, my love for trains goes back to to literally uh, my very earliest memories. I prefer to operate trains over build scenery, but uh, the summer of 2021 during the pandemic, uh, my wife and I uh, spent most of the summer uh, scratch building uh, scenery for this particular layout. And uh, here's some of the photos. We built a, a Hogwarts castle with uh, a couple of uh, towers on it, and uh, these are minus the the cone tower, the cones on top of the towers at the moment. Uh, the second photo should have those. Um, we built a bunch of houses. Um, some of them are, as I said, they're they're scratch built. They aren't particular to scale. They aren't specific. Uh, we just kind of put them up on the board when we want to. And there's a couple of kits in there. Um, yeah, we we just had fun building some of the scenery. My. Uh now six-year-old granddaughter um, also loves trains. Um, we've been uh, members of the Southern, Southern, Southern California Railway Museum, also known as the Orange Empire Railway Museum in Paris, um, for several years. Uh, my granddaughter loves it. So we were up there and uh, she looked at me and said, Grandpa, can you make me a train? Uh, this is the result. And um, there's my favorite uh, GP7, and it's the prototype for uh, what is named the Kiji, uh, our dog, and the road name for this is the CJ and B. It's the, the road of the three sisters, my three daughters, and uh, here's a ruler to scale it. Now, you have to have a steam engine. The steam engine is the Lily Bean. It's named after my granddaughter, and uh, it has a drawbar for the tender, and then the cars are all roughly modeled after the Disneyland Railroad because we were annual pass holders of the Disneyland Railroad, and you can pull this train up and down the track. They're all coupled. Uh, they work nice. And there is detailing in the cab. And there's another video of my granddaughter uh, playing with these. The locomotive is properly timed. It's a right-handed engine. So, uh, kind of fun. Uh, made this down in my workshop. And uh, the track is about 13 feet long. Uh, stores in the hallway. Um, up and out of the way. It does get dusty. Kind of fun. Here's our um, wood steam train, no particular gauge, uh, sitting in a storage point. It's in a, uh, it's above the doors in a hallway, and uh, the steam engine is the Lily Bean, named after our granddaughter, who is affectionately referred to as uh, Princess Lily Bean of Candyland. Uh, the three passenger cars are named after my daughters, Cindy, Jenny, and Becky. And the caboose is named after my wife, Joyce. And then the Jeep 7 um, is named after our dog, Kiji. And this is how it all sits in the hallway in storage. And my granddaughter, uh, the Bean, will come in and tell us, Grandpa, well, we're going to play with the trains, and then we have to get them down. Kind of fun. Back to my Jeep 7 and uh, an engine I love. Um, it means a lot to me. It was uh, I was allowed to pick this um, present up in what was 
the Pullman Car Company's uh, manufacturing facilities. Uh, it was being used as a uh, as a place to um, sell Christmas toys, a toy mart thing. Um, back probably 1959, 1960, somewhere in that time frame, I was allowed to pick it up. Uh, and my mother had friends who grew up in Pullman City. And uh, she took me around and showed me where they lived and uh, explained to me how uh, company towns worked and whatever else. So this engine uh, means a lot to me. The F7 means a lot to me even though it was given to me used. Uh, it's been through a lot. Uh, it's been through several floods. I've had to repair it numerous times. And uh, I'm going to keep it running just as long as I possibly can. Uh, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, maybe we'll see you in another one. Thanks. Bye.